Hello, I'm Richard Ridge. George and Ira Gershwin's musical masterpiece, Porgy and Bess, is returning to Broadway for the first time in over 35 years. It'll open on January 12th at the Richard Rogers Theater. Under the direction of Diane Paulus, it stars four-time Tony Award winner Audra McDonald, Norm Lewis, and David Alan Greer. And we're here in the rehearsal room to give you a sneak peek. so exciting to watch the numbers today. Tell me what this whole experience has been like for you working on Porgy and Bess. It has been one of the most extraordinary experiences of my lifetime. Spending the last two and a half years immersed in this incredible score, studying the original so deeply, casting this group of performers to bring the show to life for Broadway, working with the estate and the families of George and Ira Gershwin and DuBose and Dorothy Hayward, educating myself about the history of this work. It's been enriching in every possible way. And now to have the opportunity to bring it to the Richard Rogers Theater, bring it to a Broadway audience, and share the talent and the amazing work with a next generation of audience is a totally thrilling experience. You've assembled an incredible cast, including your two, your Porgy and your best. Talk about them. Audra McDonald is a phenomenon. I can tell you from uh, having worked with her, everything you see on stage is rivaled by how she operates in the rehearsal hall. She is so rigorous, so truthful, so dedicated to her craft. Uh, Norm Lewis, the most generous, loving, kind human being. The combination of the two of them is unbelievable. And I think the two of them has brought forward the power of this love story. I think people are going to be knocked out by the extraordinary love story that is Porgy and Bess. Diane Paulus called me up one day and said, would you like to work on Porgy and Bess? And I said, well, what do you mean Porgy and Bess? Porgy and Bess is a beautiful opera. She said, yeah, but the Gershwins would like to transform it into a musical suitable for the Broadway stage. And I said, that sounds very exciting. I'm in. And that's basically how it started for me. Yeah. So what has the process been like working with this classic material? Well, it's. It, well, I was thinking earlier that it's such a joyous and beautiful process because we have basically the instructions to take it from the beautiful opera that it is and transform to a musical, into a musical suitable for Broadway. And what we've got is great, uh, beautiful music, excellent music, a wonderful book, and we just want to make it, you know, into a musical, so it's been fun. It's fun. I mean, it's great. It's like working with, like, the best, you know, it's like playing on, I don't know, I don't want to offend anybody, but like the Yankees. I hope you're Yankees, you know. I mean, it's like playing with, like, the, like the, the, those players at the top, top, top for their game. So you, you, your game gets better, you know what I mean? It's like playing tennis with a really great tennis player. Your game gets better, so. So what was the most challenging aspect for you as a writer? Or was there one? It was, uh, gosh, that's a really good question. There was really no, I mean, I always thought, I mean, I was, because I was invited into the process by the Gershwin estate, I always felt welcome um, because they were very encouraging in their feedback and because they were just very loving and supportive and they gave me notes that I took uh, very gratefully. Um, I always felt they were with me every step of the way and I thought that the Haywards in spirit and the Gersons were with me every step of the way so um, it, it's just showing up every day and keeping an open mind and being attentive every single day and now we're working on the small things now the, this word oh I want a different word here I want a different word there Can, should he sing that note should he you know that kind of stuff so it's small it's little things now so to get into heaven, don't Initially it was overwhelming because the first 
day, it was like being jumped into an opera gang because we attacked the most difficult music in this piece, and I was just overwhelmed. I mean, at the end of the day, Diane was like, are you okay? And I was like, and Philip would sit behind me, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. You know, you're third up, you got that right. It's B flat, you're below the, not, no, I'm not really sure. So it was, uh, it was pretty overwhelming, but um, also it's Gershwin. So every, every piece of music was amazing, was more beautiful. Play that again, that's my recit. Everything, it was just an overabundance um, to discover it and have it, and this is what we're doing. So, Audra McDonald, come on. Susan Laurie Parks, Diane Paulus, it, it, I, I feel so happy, and Norm, eh, but the rest, no, but I mean, I'm so happy. I didn't know if I would have a chance to do Porgy and Bess in my career, in this context, on Broadway. It's never been done like that since I've been acting, since 81. So for me, it was a no-brainer. I have to do this if I can, if you'll let me. Can I audition? They did. It all worked out, so here I am. Incredible role, one of the best roles ever written for stage, and the song you get to sing. Uh, songs, man. So, but the one today. Yes. Talk about the song we saw today. Wow. It ain't necessarily so. My three-and-a-half-year-old daughter's already singing it. It ain't necessarily so. Yeah, she. Uh, it's a song I've grown up singing, and that's what's amazing about Gershwin. I think... So many people would say, oh, Porgy and Bess, they think they've seen it, but they really haven't. All you got to do is say, do you know it? Yeah. What's the story about? You know. <laughs> so, so it's really to see it in its complete context and all these amazing songs that are actually feeding and propelling this dramatic and moving storyline uh, is really the wonder of this show. I have maybe half a dozen jazz albums. Every artist in the world has recorded Porgy and Bess. And so to see it in its full context and be a part of it has been amazing. Yeah. There's just one thing you have to know about crowds. Nobody's getting away with crowds. Why? <laughs> I play Crown, and Crown is, uh, you know, every community have these guys who's a bully or, you know, they drink a little bit too much and then they are ready to fight you. Uh, you never know, he can fight for you or he will fight you, so you have to walk on eggshells with him. And just talk about what this whole experience has been like for you, working on Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. You know, um, as a young boy, um, I wasn't able to sing. Um, I couldn't match pitches. My uncle had the album of Porgy and Bess with William Warfield and Leontine Price on the cover. Um, I saw those wonderful African Americans on the cover of this album. And I, I thought, if they can do it, then I can too. So it actually started me wanting to be a singer. And for this to be my first Broadway show, it's an amazing experience. Working with the director, D Diane Pullis, Susan Laurie Parks, and Deidre Murray, uh, four-time Tony Award winner, Audra McDonald, and Norm Lewis, and David Allen Greer. It's it's beyond, I am beyond excited to be on this stage. It's been amazing. It was great because we had time at the ART to try a lot of different versions of the show, a lot of different tweaks and nicks and acts. And here we are about to open up the Richard Rogers. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. Talk about the role you play. I play the role Jake, and he's someone I admire. He's a family man. He puts his family first. And uh, he's got a wife and a kid who's six months old. He's also got a side for adventure, so it's finding the, the marriage of the two there. And just talk about the thrill about working on this Gershwin musical. Oh, it's such an amazing historical piece. I mean, it's been 35 years since this has been in New York on Broadway. So to be able to do that with this amazing creative team, a phenomenal cast, I can't wait for audiences to see it and to hear this amazing sound. Um, it's really exciting.
said something to me at the opening night party of Hair in London. And, um, you know, we talked for a minute and then it kind of went away. And, um, and then other people had been talking. I mean, it feels like there was a, a, a lot of people talking about it. And every once in a while, someone would say something to me about it. And I would be like, oh, OK, whatever. And then uh, she came to me in earnest um, about four months later and said, no, this is real. We've got dates. Um, uh, Gershwin and, and DeBose Hayward Estates have come to us. They want us to do this version for the 21st century. Um, do you want to be a part of it? Susan Laurie and I have this idea. Would you like to be a part of it? And I said, uh, OK, why not? Yeah. So what has it been like working on this classic musical that's going to be one of the most beautiful scores ever written? Most beautiful scores ever written. That's absolutely true. <laughs> It's been the uh, the most fulfilling and challenging experience of my life. You know, it's uh, it's it's one of those pieces that you know you think you know and you feel like you know because you've grown up with it. And I certainly have seen many productions of it, and I knew the music from the time I was young. Um, and every day that I go on that stage, I learn something new about the piece, about the characters, about the history. Uh, I feel like it's it's this beautiful sort of like treasure trove that continues to reveal itself to me you know and I feel like whenever I do decide to step away from this particular production there will still be so much more that I never even unearthed you know you have an incredible cast particularly Norm Lewis oh gosh Norm Lewis too bad he's not handsome too bad he can't sing too bad he can't act but we'll deal no it's amazing every everybody in this cast first of all this You've never heard a, an ensemble sound like the sound of our, our cast. It's just the voices, each one of them is, you know, from God. And um, the, the love and the passion and the spirituality with everybody involved in this piece. And, the, and the, you know, everybody behind the scenes as well. Um, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Uh, it's just been great. It's just I, I, we can't wait to get to work every day because we love each other so much. Talk about the role and talk about the musical. Well, the role itself, I've never had any aspirations to play it because it's always been in the opera world, and that you know that's just not my voice. But when the opportunity came up that they were going to bring it to Broadway, I jumped at it. I said, please get me in and see if I can be a part of it in any way, shape, or form. And when I got offered the the role, the lead role of Porgy, I just was over the moon, over the moon. Of course, opposite Audra McDonald. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, I've always known that she's been the consummate performer and she digs deep into her roles and she brings truth and honesty to her roles. But working with her is a whole nother story. I've learned so much from her and I just know that being on stage with her, she's giving. She's very giving and, and she wants you to be with her. But just know, if you're not with her, you're going to miss that train. You better, you better keep up. So it's made me a better performer and a better person. Beautiful score. Talk about that. Well, the score, it speaks for itself. It's so lush. It's so beautiful. What we've done, I mean, we, we have cut some of the music away to tell more of the story and turn a lot of the recitative into dialogue. So instead of the show being four hours long, like the original opera, we've made it into a two and a half hour show, a musical theater, uh, th musical theater show. And I think we've brought the story out a little bit more. Still paying homage to the music, but we brought the story out a little bit more. So when you were up at ART, what did you learn about the show up there that you've changed before it comes into New York? Well, you know, it gave us a chance to really process what's going, you know, what we need to do to make this this show a little bit more authentic in its uh, in its nature. And um, there's you know slight little tweaks here and there uh, that we're working on right now before we go into the theater next week. But uh, it's pretty much the same thing, and and we've learned you know a lot just. I guess it's so much that I can't even tell. I wish I had more time to tell you, but it's just come see the show at the Richard Rogers Theater. We're so ready for the audiences to see it, and we're excited. We're excited.